As you know, in New York State, after the nice Serpa versus Bruin case, Kathy Hochul basically declared the state a sensitive place, gun-free zone. However, there is a major legal challenge that is now being heard before the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Five major cases are pending before then. Huge deal. But that's not the interesting part. Guess who today just weighed in, possibly on the side of gun owners against sensitive places? That would be, ready for this, folks? The New York Times. Stay tuned. I'll explain all when we get back. Hey, folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes of Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and New York Times bestselling author. If you haven't subscribed to the Four Boxes of Diner Second Amendment channel, please do so. We're trying to get to 100,000 subscribers as fast as possible to help with the social media algorithms. So some shocking news out of New York State. What happened? Well, as you know, there is five major cases, federal cases that are now pending before the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the major federal appellate court covering New York State, are hearing the questions about the new gun control laws enacted by Kathy Hochul, the governor, and her state legislature in the wake of NYSERPA versus Bruin. Now, this was a hissy fit that we've talked about a little bit before, but there's been some breaking news that's just occurred that may change everything in our favor. A tragic story, but something that may break in favor of the Second Amendment, and the New York Times has noticed this. So let me tell you what's happening. So it turns out that there was a shooting in the middle of the so-called Times Square sensitive place. Because what New York did was they declared all of Times Square and then some all around Times Square to be a sensitive place, government mandated gun free zone, which meant that even if you qualified and had a concealed carry permit, which as you know, is your constitutional right under nice server versus Bruin, you could not bring a gun into that area even with a concealed carry permit, unless you were law enforcement. Now, obviously, everyone made fun of New York for this, and it's almost certainly unconstitutional. We'll get to that in one second. But everyone made fun of New York to saying this is stupid because just putting up a bunch of signs to say gun-free zones, because Kathy Hochul and the mayor, Eric Adams, put up all these gun-free zone signs all around New York uh, Times Square, and people just laughed at that and said that's just plain stupid because it's not going to stop anybody from doing anything. Nevertheless, they did that. had great fanfare, had the, you know, took photos of this and so on and so on. So on and so on. But here's what's quite interesting. Um, needless to say, our predictions has proven correct because just on Friday night, an individual was tragically murdered, looks like by two suspects on 44th Street and 8th Avenue. So that is terrible, of course, story. But what's extremely interesting was the reaction to this murder in the middle of Times Square by the New York Times newspaper. Needless to say, the New York Times is no friend of gun rights. In fact, I'm not sure I've ever seen a gun control law that they oppose at all. With that said, the New York Times published in the aftermath of that Times Square shooting the following article, which I'll link to down below. Specifically, and this is the title, quote, Times Square Killing Tests New York's Push to Curb Gun Violence. The fatal shooting was the first since the area was designated a quote-unquote gun-free zone in response to the Supreme Court's ruling striking down the state's firearms law. And the entire article is talking about, does this make any difference? They even cite to a RAND Corporation study, and the RAND Corporation uh, is a very famous think tank uh, public policy center, does a lot of statistical and empirical research, and even they, according to the New York Times article, uh, have concluded that it's not clear gun-free zones do any good at all. Uh, of course, from the research that I've looked at, including from, among others, John Lott, it's pretty clear in common sense that gun-free zones do nothing but help criminals. We understood this going all the way back to the Founding fa Fathers era because Cesar Beccari, a famous Italian Enlightenment philosopher, explained exactly that, that when you ban guns, uh, you only benefit the criminal and harm the law by them. We've known this for hundreds of years, probably even thousands. But the bottom line, though, is now you see with articles like this in the New York Times, it suggests that even anti-gunners in New York are starting to ask themselves, what is the point of designating these gun-free zones if it doesn't do any good? So the fact that the New York Times has just published this article literally blocks away, several dozen blocks away, but still blocks away from the courthouse 
the federal courthouse for the Second Circuit Court of Appeals uh, is somewhat telling as to perhaps how people that live in New York are starting to think about guns because obviously these signs don't work, which we could have told them. Now, what's even more interesting, of course, and we're going to really break down in a very geeky way uh, the cases before the Second Circuit as that oral argument, which is set for March 20th of 2023. That's March 20th, 2023. As that oral argument date approaches, uh, we'll start to do some videos discussing the breakdown of some of the issues and how to think about those issues uh, as we approach that oral argument date. But in the meantime, I think what we can do in terms of the sensitive places is simply remind you what I don't think, but what the United States Supreme Court said in NYSERPA versus Bruin, because the Supreme Court has already basically addressed what New York is trying to do and stopped them. Now, of course, what's interesting is that New York State had very few gun-free sensitive place zones before NYSERPA versus Bruin, which obviously, to me, is factually telling that they didn't think a lot of these places that have now been designated gun-free zones sensitive places were certainly not sensitive places until NYSERPA versus Bruin. So that alone strongly suggests that New York State doesn't actually believe these places are sensitive places. They just wanted to throw their hissy fit and thumb their nose at the Supreme Court's decision in Bruin, and none of this stuff is actually anything they truly believe. Set that issue aside, though, just as a matter of law, if you look at what Justice Thomas wrote in Nicerpa versus Bruin about sensitive places, it really destroys New York's case that Times Square can legally be designated a sensitive place. Obviously, it doesn't work for a whole host of reasons, including the fact that, you know, here we had a murder, a guy shot and murdered uh, just, you know, a day ago or so, and the gun-free zone signs meant nothing. Of course they wouldn't met, met nothing. But beyond that, let's just remember what the Supreme Court said in Nice Herbert Brood about sensitive places. This is what they wrote. They said that although the historical record yields relatively few 18th and 19th century sensitive places where weapons were altogether prohibited, e.g., and this is where they did say sensitive places did exist, legislative assemblies, polling places, and courthouses, so they did say those can be sensitive places as a general matter. Uh, we are also aware of no dispute regarding the lawfulness of such prohibitions, meaning the Supreme Court did acknowledge there are places that could be gun-free zones legally under the Second Amendment. But again, the only places the Supreme Court said can be sensitive places as a general matter are, again, polling places, courthouses, and legislative assemblies. However, the Supreme Court did open the door and say, look, it's possible that if there are new and analogous places to courthouses, legislative assemblies, and polling places, then maybe sensitive places could still fly in the modern America beyond those three places, but they have to be new and analogous to those three places. As applied to whether or not Times Square can be designated a sensitive place, it clearly cannot, as I see it, based on Nicerba versus Bruins language alone. Here's what the Supreme Court wrote. It's, it basically rejected the notion, because New York was arguing that their proper cause requirement was effectively a sensitive place argument, and the Supreme Court threw that out and said, that's absurd. The Supreme Court went on to say, quote, by expanding the category of sensitive places simply to include all places of public congregation, which Times Square would be, that are not isolated from law enforcement defines the category of sensitive places far too broadly, period, close quote. You see what the Supreme Court says? That just because people congregate somewhere and there is a presumed presence of law enforcement floating around, which is what New York's arguing in this case involving Times Square, that's not enough. That's not enough. In fact, the Supreme Court went on specifically and warned New York, do not do what you're thinking about doing with Times Square and places like Times Square in the state of New York because it ain't going to stand. Here is my proof. The Supreme Court specifically wrote this address to New York and to the, to, the, to the island of Manhattan, which is where Times Square is located. This is what the Supreme Court wrote. Quote, put simply, there is no historical basis for New York to effectively declare the island of Manhattan where Times Square is located, a sensitive place simply because it is crowded, which it is, and protected generally by the NYPD. That's the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court has already flagged this issue and said, don't even think about it in New York, and New York did it anyway because they want to be spanked, apparently. And that's what's going to happen, I suspect, in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. And because if you look at the argument that New York is already advancing in this New York Times article, if you look at what New York City and New York State are arguing 
at least in the New York Times article, to try to justify their sensitive place in Times Square argument, which is not going to fly as I see it. This is what they talk about. They're bragging. I kid you not. You know, you're going to laugh your butt off of this. They're laughing. Uh, they're not laughing, but we're going to laugh. It's a tragic, but this is what they're saying, that they have doubled the size of patrol units in Times Square to 137 police officers from 65. Now, I want to put this into perspective for you. 137 police officers, assuming that they're all working at the same time and they don't take bathroom breaks and the like. Let's assume they're all working all at once. Times Square is designated by New York City. It is literally miles and miles of, of square miles. Just keep in mind that for anyone that is in and around New York City, you know how this works. Every 20 blocks north-south is approximately one mile. Every four blocks east-west, when you add it up, is approximately one mile. So if you look at the designated area of Times Square, you're literally looking at multiple miles, square miles. And keep in mind that aside from the millions of people that live in New York City, you also have approximately something on the order of magnitude of 50. That's five zero. 50 million, 50 million tourists that come to New York City, and most of those guys and gals go through New York, go through Times Square. So you literally have millions upon millions upon millions of people going through Times Square all the time in New York City, and you have 137 police officers at any given moment at most patrolling Times Square. That is simply absurd. That is barely a police presence. But keep in mind that we also know the sensitive places in Times Square don't work because on New Year's Eve, a guy came in and attacked multiple police officers with a machete. Uh, seems to me maybe they need to say gun-free zones and machete-free zones to double the protection in that area of New York City. Bottom line, though, folks, is that this illustrates this New York Times article, which ra is raising questions in the New York Times whether or not these gun-free zone signs and these gun-free zones designations make any difference whatsoever, maybe even make the problem worse, is a very interesting argument and the fact that it is coming just on the eve of a major Second Circuit Court of Appeals argument on, in March about sensitive places in New York City. One wonders how many of the judges they're going to have to make that decision involving the Second Amendment. Read that article by the New York Times because I bet you dollars to donuts that every member of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals is reading the New York Times on a daily basis. I wonder how many of them have read today's article and said to themselves, yeah, that does sound stupid. Why would we think a gun-free zone in Times Square is somehow going to actually stop criminals from doing criminal things? And one wonders whether or not that will make a difference as they read Nice Server versus Bruin. And if they read it properly, there's no way Times Square can be designated a gun-free zone under New York law. But again, uh, I'm not a federal judge, so I can't tell you what would happen. But I can certainly see... Uh, us winning this case big time, but only time will tell. We'll know a lot more in a couple months and we'll be here to report it for sure. Okay, folks, hope you learned a little bit something about this New York Times article and gun-free zones in New York City. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. We'll see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.